Okay, so uh, anyway, this is a really early start this morning. Uh, Joseph and I haven't had coffee yet. Uh, it's very early in, um, in London. We have a connection with uh, Beijing and Guangzhou and are very delighted to have this conversation today as a celebration of Southway's new publication, HX, which has been jointly published by the Serpentine Galleries and the Pavilion on the occasion of Southway's exhibition, Blueprints, the exhibition at the Serpentine, which is Southway's large scale institutional solo show, the first one actually in the UK. Uh, it's also uh, almost 20 years ago that we met Southway in, in Guangzhou, where you are today. This is a triangular conversation because we have you in, uh, in Guangzhou, and then we have, of course, the book's uh, editor, uh, curator, and scholar of film and contemporary art, Yang Bei Zhen. We also have the book's designer. Sun Joji, we are very grateful to all of you. And I'm joined here by the Serpentine's curator and co-editor of the publication, Joseph Constable, uh, who had temporarily last year moved to Beijing to work on the, uh, on the exhibition, uh, is now back in London. Uh, welcome to, uh, to all of you. And before we begin, I wanted to actually say a few thank yous uh, to um, many people who have actually made this exhibition and this book possible. Um, of course, to Sao Fei for almost 20 years of friendship for South Fe's amazing dedication and vision. We are also very grateful to the co-publishers of the book, the Pavilion, uh, in particular, of course, to Zhang Wei and to Hu Fang and to Zhu Lang Zhu at Vitamin Creative Space. We're particularly happy today is Hu Fang's birthday. So we're sending Hu Fang special birthday wishes. We are also grateful to the writers uh, who have contributed actually texts to the book to Yang Yun, to Deborah Cable, to Wang Hongji, to Jie Fei, to Zhao Song, and of course to Yang Beijing, who wrote the text, Film Media Socialism, uh, and again uh, to Sun Joji, the designer of, uh, of the book. Our thanks go also to the Luma Foundation, uh, the partner for this exhibition, as well as the supporting partner, Muse, the Rolls Royce Arts Program. Uh, we also express our deepest gratitude to acute art, because this exhibition, uh, and we're gonna talk about that uh, more in, uh, in the conversation, this exhibition actually has uh, been a collaboration with acute art with Jacob de Geer and Daniel Birnbaum. They initially co-produced the VR for the exhibition. Uh, and then of course, we had to uh, develop the uh, AR when the exhibition reopened after the lockdown together with South Bay. Um, the VR became an AR, but again, we're going to talk about that more uh, in the talk. Thanks go also, uh, of course, to uh, the many supporters of this exhibition, to Yong So Hu, to Max and Monique Burger, with the Toy Family, to Asymmetry Art Foundation, to Cherry Spire and Kat Kat Katrina Farley, and also to Monica Sprüth and Philomene Magas, who are all part of the South Bay Exhibition Circle. Uh, also the Design Trust and the Beijing Contemporary Art Foundation have been partners. Thanks go, as always, to our chairman, Mike Bloomberg, to Bloomberg Philanthropies for partnering with us on the Serpentine Digital Engagement Program. Thanks also to Patty Harris and Gemma Reed, to our advisors at ACOM and also to Weil. We are also very grateful to the Council of the Serpentine, uh, with whom, uh, without whom our work would not be possible, the Innovation Circle, the America's Foundation, the Asian Council, the patrons, the future contemporaries, the benefactors, the corporate members, as well as the Arts Council of uh, England. And then, of course, Hu Han Ru. Uh, to Hu Han Ru, because it all began with Hu Han Ru, because uh, many years ago, I got a phone call from Hu Han Ru from Guangzhou. Uh, and Hu Han Ru had visited studios at the Academy in, uh, in Guangzhou and had uh, seen for the first time the work of Sao Fei and said that we should meet. So I'm eternally grateful to Huan Ru for this great introduction. Last but not least, most importantly, we are also very grateful to uh, the Serpentine Dream Team. Bettina Korek, our CEO, and I are so grateful to Joseph Constable for his incredible dedication and vision of this exhibition, to Rebecca Lewin, to Joe Payton, to Ben Vickers, Kay Watson, Mike Gon, Joel Bunn, and also Katarina Avateno. And now is the moment to welcome our uh, speakers, uh, Joseph and I are delighted to now welcome Sao Fei, Yang Beijing, and Sun Joji. A very warm welcome and good morning. 
And maybe we could begin with the first question for Sao Fei. I wanted to begin our conversation really with the beginning of this project by asking you about how this research project uh, began. Because I remember when we visited for the very first time uh, the studio, your new studio in Hongja Theater, you told us how you actually first came across the theater and how it quite immediately ignited an interest and research project which would last for several years. And I remember also that it reminded me at the time of Bern and Hilla Becher, whom I had met many years ago, the uh, photographers in, in Düsseldorf, who of course had decided in the 60s and onwards to actually document the amazing industrial architecture, which was about to disappear. And in a similar way, uh, Sao Fei, you not only chose this as your studio, but also decided to document this amazing history, which of course was a, kind of on the cusp really of being erased. Can you tell us the story of how you first came across the theater? So uh, in 2015, uh, I lost my uh, last uh, studio just nearby the Hongxia Theater. So I started to looking for a new studio to institute my old studio. Uh, in Beijing, uh, as you know, the, um, the city is growing uh, too fast. So it means uh, the different generation of artists, they have to move out uh, uh, more far, far than uh, in the city central. So every two or three years, um, many of the artists have to move their studio in Beijing. Uh, that is very uh, normal uh, phenomenon. So in 2015, uh, when I uh, looking for the new space, I just uh, by chance to uh, make the Hongxia Theater. Um, they um, tried to renting out uh, half of the theater uh, for for like a store storage room use it. So by chance, so uh, I have the space, but uh, actually I don't need uh, this kind of huge space for studio use it. But um, I think it's kind of a decree of by fate. Um, I think I, I I something I I can do in the theater even I don't know any historical knowledge behind the theater but, um, but I think um, as a cinema should be have a, a lot of magic inside the space so when I move in the space uh, I taking the history uh, of the cinema and then I found uh, this is a uh, have a um, Chinese uh, technology industry history since uh, New China. So that means have like 60 years uh, electronic history uh, hiding um, uh, be be behind the cinema. So that is uh, what I did in the past five years, uh, working on different media and focus on this Hongxia project, including publication, ex exhibition, film, and VR and AR piece. So today, when we're talking about the publication, it's like a, more like a conclusion of, of the whole project. Um, and just thinking more about that history, the history of Hongxia, but also the, um, the sort of industrial development in New China, as you speak about, I think one of the interesting things that um, we discussed was how this history is pretty much it's not that remembered or sort of historicized by the Chinese government. It's not sort of written into official history in that way. So a lot of the time, a lot of the documents, uh, the photographs and things that you've collected, uh, you found online, you know, they weren't protected. So in a way there was a whole archiving process that you had to do. And I was wondering, why do you think there is this gap in um, the social consciousness between the histories of this area and how are you sort of uh, in a way kind of creating or uh, memorializing this history by going into the theater? So uh, first enter the, uh, the theater, uh, I try to connect different pe people mm. or different, uh, like a, a urban planning center in Beijing and also connect tourist uh, factory, the 73A the official uh, period's factory. So uh, actually it's hard to get the uh, officially uh, material from them. 
um, I think some of them is hidden or, or in, 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 in their secret archive and also uh, not too much uh, information about this history, I mean, from uh, this, this different institution. And that forced me to looking for different material around this project, like different archive, different uh, photo, and also the photo from the residency live around this area. And also um, like uh, the camera, right? The projection, uh, a different archive material is out of this uh, uh, government. Uh, in, so, but this is more interesting to have directly collect a uh, connection with the uh, Paris uh, 73A factory. Um, I think it's more rich this uh, research from different ways as artists use alternative uh, channel to discovering different layer of this project. So that also makes this publication have much uh, different material and different texture of the uh, publication. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about the gap, I think uh, if you look at different uh, category of uh, China uh, in industry, even in electronic or different factory, uh, every, uh, every industry have a big gap uh, between, uh, between past and uh, Reason. Uh, uh, I think the gap is uh, is open policy. It's forced a lot of uh, government official uh, factory is uh, uh, bankrupt. So uh, many of them have a, a gap. And what I did is how to uh, connect this gap uh, and uh, fill this gap. And and also another point of view is. Because when I doing this research, a lot of uh, government factory is refused to upset my uh, research to their archive uh, because this is a gap history. From the beginning, they have a very grand history of this. They developed the first computer, the second computer, they developed the first, uh, they calculate the, and uh, participate the first, uh, sub, uh, sub, the bomb and the satellite. But after the open policy in uh, end of 80 and all this uh, factory is closed or, or transferred to uh, a country control in the, uh, a company, something like that. So for them, it's not uh, easy to have to, to uh, describe this gap. Do you understand? It's, uh, because this is, uh, you can say it's a, how do you say, it's a failure, 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 so they don't have to write this story, because the history has been broken. Yeah, it's a history, it's a history, it's interrupted, because, uh, yeah, the history is interrupted, and the, and consider as a failure. Uh, so, uh, 我, 我, 我前面没有太那个跟上你的这个, 这个, so, so, uh, yeah, so my friend is how to translate is that the history is interrupted at the end. So, the uh, government, uh, the factories belong to the government at the beginning, right? Even now. So, it's not uh, a, a honor to to describe this whole history as yeah. a whole. Yeah. So they always mention the past, but they yeah. don't want to talking about uh, reason. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I did for the project is also is, uh, it, that is uh, how we uh, connect the past uh, and reason. And of course, the NOVA, the, 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 uh, the creation of this project is, uh, uh, is connecting the future. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, and Safi, you have written an incredible text in the book where you allude actually to the sense of responsibility that you feel to, towards the Hangzhou Theatre and, and its history. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about 
this notion of responsibility. In the text you write, indeed, we were not able to truly stir up reality. We could not ensure the survival of the Hangzhou theater or win more rights for the residents of Yuk Zhangzhou. All of this was a way of indulging our wish for thinking from the lofty pretense of art. Like the vast majority of people, we are powerless and sorrowful in the face of epochal change. All we can do is meticulously depict the beauty and splendor, the loss and cruelty, the complexity and limpidity of the times." End of quote. Now it's interesting, um, I was rereading the text this morning and it's, it's really interesting to read these words with hindsight now that we are here and the HX project is complete. Could you speak a little bit about how you felt the very first time you entered the building and also how your feelings and sense of responsibility to the building and these projects have actually changed over the years? Yeah, if you look at my writing in the book, Hongxia, uh, my article, so uh, um, I, um, I try to uh, remember, remember the first time how I uh, met the cinema in two, uh, uh, 2011. And I have impression of that uh, and have uh, also have a wish uh, on, uh, about Hongxia Theater. I hope one day can film inside the theater. And then 2015, I have a chance to enter the space and use the space as my studio and, create, uh, uh, and realize my dream, my wish inside it. So it's something it's like a uh, real like an, an how to say uh, how to say a uh, real life uh, a project like you asked before is an real life project right? Um, I use four and five year to finish it. Um, from the very beginning, because um, my my first. Uh, Remember of this, I think is um, how can I do? Uh, what 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 should I do with this huge space uh, as artists? And and I think the most important is for me is like what I say is like a decree by the faith. I have to do something with them, and also some unsee power or unsee magic force me to carry it on in the past five years. Actually, it's, it's very heavy and it's heavier than uh, other people cannot imagine. Uh, is the space not a good space for studio? Because I think the space for me is carrying too much information. The history, historical information is for me is uh, hard to breathe. And also as a studio, it's not convenient with a huge dark space, very humid, and in the Chaoyang district, uh, it's, uh, it, this kind of a sensitive area, uh, a lot of uh, residents uh, live around. So, uh, but I think uh, is maybe the uh, personal responsibility, but this responsibility is not represent by by country or by Beijing or represent by the group of Xia registry or represent by the factory. I think it's like a personal memory or like a Beichen, even like Shun Xiaoxi, different generation, our memory of old China, our memory of old Beijing, uh, our memory of uh, 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 social uh, uh, communism party in the past. So I think it represents uh, the whole generation. So, okay. but yeah, but, but it's not a narrative of, uh, of, of, of the officially uh, 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 memory, uh, responsibility. Yeah. I guess that's what's so interesting about the space, like both Hans Ulrich and I visited it at the theatre on different occasions, but it's sort of like when you go in there, it's sort of in between fact and fiction. And it's this kind of 
almost like a kind of stage set of history. And I think with, with the Serpentine exhibition, um, the, with the first gallery, we kind of recreated a sense of that space. So it created almost like a kind of stage set where we brought the, you know, the real furniture from Beijing. We used similar paint colors. We used the same floor to create this quite immersive space. But actually when you go to the real theater um, to experience it, it feels like this kind of, um, like a museum or a living museum. It's, it's like an archive, but it's also your studio, but it's also this kind of um, space of preservation. So I'd be interested to hear how you made decisions about um, how you brought the theatre back to life. So how you decided to decorate it, what are the different objects that you brought and how you sort of made decisions about how you, about how to you know, bring back this history, but also not create something that's just located in the past. You know, it's also very much in the present and maybe the future. So I'd be interested to hear more about that. Uh, I think I'm very clear that the, uh, the Hongxia Theatre is not belong me, it's belong the group. Uh, even I occupy it uh, uh, as a uh, uh, temporary, as a core Chao Fei studio, but actually it's not. I just use Chao Fei studio to cover our action. Mm -hmm. So the, call, the action is document the history or digging the history of, uh, of this uh, uh, electronic industry. And also, and, um, so, so that is, I don't want to make it like a, a, a personal artist studio, mm. right? Uh, if you look at 798, so a lot of the gallery and, 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 and shop and space or, or a museum, they transfer the, the uh, factory to another modern, uh, modern space or YQ. Right and save some of the element of the space or uh, uh, keep it more to uh, Jing Guan Hua than sure. Spectacleization or uh, or gentrification. Yeah. Yes. Right. So uh, I think I th I think my uh, 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 my idea is how to to keep it as uh, original, like the color, uh, like the uh, the witness uh, of the space, and how to decorate as what I imagine, like the, the I decorate the poster, uh, like the old f uh, furniture, and also some of the like a uh, uh, few scenes decorate concept, mm -hmm. um, because I can plan it or imagine we will film it in the latest uh maybe in 2008 18 or 19 so we decorate for the future i mean we decorate for the nova but even we don't have the script of the nova we don't have the play of the nova but uh we imagine and we plan it yeah thank you so much now as part of the project, you also spend uh, a lot of time, and I think this idea of, because we, you know, live in a in a in an age where um, we, I feel, need to go beyond this idea of event culture and of exhibitions, and and uh, and and introduce maybe slower programming and slower ways of working, and and also liberate time. The idea of liberating time is important, and you clearly liberate the time for this project um, and and slow down because it took a lot of time. I remember we kept visiting you and uh, it's, you know, it's a project which didn't take a year in the making. It, it was actually many years in the making. And, and, and as part of this time, you, you liberate that you also actually spend time speaking with the local residents of the neighborhood. And in this sense, we can say you acted almost also like a sociologist. And, and this, of course, is manifest in the Hangzhou documentary that was also presented as part of the exhibition at the, at the Serpentine and which is, of course, very present in the book. And you also made a photographic series, which is actually printed and published for the first time in the book. Uh, so it's a world premiere. So I wanted to ask you to speak a little bit more about that, about this idea of working on a project, you know, for, for more, with more time, this idea of, because it's interesting because I'm just, I've just been reading this book on uh, actually, uh, and I can't show it to you now because it's on the it's on the book pile uh, where the where the phone is. I put the phone on a book pile, but it's the book by Roman Kajanik, you know, the Guru Ancestor, and 
And Roman Kajanik says that the world is kind of imprisoned and caught up in these short-term mechanisms. And we need to kind of come up with longer-term ways of working, which is very much what the Hongja project is. Can, can you talk a little bit about that, uh, about liberating time, and then also about the focus on the daily lives of those who still live in this area, about Sao Fei as a sociologist? Uh, if you look at my previous work, like uh, Who's Utopia, like Asia One, so each of this uh, Paris project is spend, spending a lot of time on this and also uh, come out with, with like documentary, right? Asia One have, uh, uh, also have uh, 11 11 the documentary, you remember, Joseph? Yeah. yeah. And Who's Utopia, we can call it like a docudrama. So the document way is kind of a parallel of my working process. Um, because only just come out with a NOVA, I think it's not uh, have a, a, a power enough for this whole project. Not only just like a, 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 a fiction of the project. Because uh, I think after, in the future, the, the, the researcher of the, the audience have a look at this uh, real documentary to uh, to to see. Um, um, 就是, 北辰, 就是通过口述史跟这个纪录片去从现实这个维度去去去了解到这个红项的真实的一个背景，就是通过口述史跟这个。so she, she said uh, she wants to like uh, uh, to let the people to know the reality of the Hongxia and the area through the oral history and the uh, anthropological way of working. So, yeah. So even today, the uh, 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 the neighborhood still struggle with. Uh, demolish uh, and and they hope they can move out the the uh, the house because now the the building is uh, is very dangerous after yeah. 60, 60 years it's broken and no protection and no uh, maintenance so they 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 I think it's difficult for them who are fighting with uh, the government and also uh, they in a very dangerous uh, condition in, the, in, in that uh, apartment. So the trophy also have article talking about this uh, Suvian, uh, uh, Suvian, Suvian building for the employee. And actually the, the documentary, Hongsha documentary was presented in the Serpentine exhibition. Um, so it's always kind of, as well as presenting the more kind of fictional narratives, there's always, like you say, there's this parallel thread, um, which we also featured um, in Blueprints as well. Um, but I was going to ask as well, I mean, maybe sort of as a last question about the Hongsha Research Project itself. Um, Rebecca Lewin and I, we, as part of the book, we wrote this collaborative text, which spoke specifically about kind of the experience that we wanted visitors to have when they came to the show. So this kind of multi-layered effect. And I think that the, the exhibition, it really kind of combined a very physical experience of being inside this very theatrical stage set. There's also then the virtual reality work, um, the augmented reality work, which added another kind of layer um, through the work Eternal Wave that we produced with Acute Art. And then you have the very cinematic experience of going into these kind of dark space, watching the feature film Nova. And so this kind of multi-layered experience, um, I think is very much um, similar to the way in which the, the book itself, the publication has been designed. You know, it has, it has archival material, it has inventories of all of these different historical objects that you've collected. It has um, a theoretical text, it has fiction, it has architectural renderings, uh, virtual images, and all of these different uh, layers are kind of built into the book itself and creates the idea of, I guess, kind of like a world, a series of worlds within one. And I think that's really what kind of the Hongsha project is about, is for allowing past, present and future, as well as fact and fiction to all kind of coalesce, um, coalesce as one. And so I, I guess one last question about the book is what now that it's been published, 
do you really see this as kind of the the culmination the kind of conclusion of the project um do you see any other ways in which it could develop and also this connects to you actually being in having the Hongshan theater as a studio you know obviously there's a that there's a time limit on that as well so i'd be interested to hear about kind of the future of what happens next I think for the uh, Hongxia project, uh, I can say it's a temporary uh, uh, stop. Yeah, it's temporary close. It's like archive. It's like a, a, a like a research as as uh, uh, I think uh, the stage uh, is uh, stop the research. But uh, if you look at the book at the beginning uh, to the to the end, um, I can't imagine from the real research to the end and virtual reality. If you look at the end, besides the VR in the Serpentine Gallery, the Hongxia uh, uniform dressing, dressing on the uh, employee of the Serpentine member, yeah, exhibition member. So it's, it looks a little bit, uh, uh, um, how to say, uh, sci-fi. It's very sci-fi. It, also, we, we don't know one day the project will export to uh, London and maybe more, more, more space. It's like a satellite. It's, uh, it's like a Hongxia uh, a, a bubble or mm. electronic bubble can, uh, um, can uh, fly around to the world. So I think it's quite interesting uh, 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 concept. Also, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's a challenging and also construct a new researching uh, structure, uh, maybe de developed from who's ut utopia or Asia one, but now based on Hongxia project, I think have uh, have a new page on on, on de developing of this kind of a historical project. Um, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just to go back to the theatre itself, because I think we've spoken a lot about the connection to this industrial factory history, but also the theatre itself as a cinema. Um, and I remember so vividly when I went to Beijing of going into the sort of second floor and there being this kind of step ladder where you climb up and it takes you to the, uh, the projectionist booth. And through the screen that you can see, you see into the old theatre space and the sort of boxes that are covered in dust. and. Um, I guess Dei Chen, I was kind of wanted to think about that relationship to cinema um, and this is something that you address specifically in your text that's published in the book called Film, Media and Socialism and you kind of tie this history very much to uh, Nova, the film. So I was wondering if you could give us a bit of an introduction about how you approach these different elements um, within the text that's in the, in the, published in the book. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, the name of my essay was inspired by a film of Jean-Luc Godard. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a name, it's called uh, Film Socialism. So in that film, uh, Godard discussed the relationship between uh, cinema and the uh, uh, socialist uh, utopia, which I think, uh, uh, I think can definitely uh, evoke an echo with the Nova. Mm -hmm. So of course, I, I, I added another word between cinema and the socialism it's a uh, it's a medium um because i think and i also showed in my text uh, nova is not only relevant to the so socialist film history uh, in china but also about the history of the socialist media technology so it's new and it's unique path of uh, uh, development um, such as uh, the film showed uh, how the first large-scale computer, the, the, the model uh, uh, 103, was made in People's Republic of China. Of course, in a very like a science fictional way. Uh, uh, so you, in Nova, you can find uh, the origin of Chinese computer industry very different from the uh, Silicon Valley mod, I mean the, the neoliberal mod. It rooted very deeply with the uh, socialist uh, cosmopolitics and uh, the special geopolitical condition uh, in the Mao era. So uh, this this part of the history has been like uh, hidden or forgotten for a very long time, uh, even in China. 
uh, we got used to think the current current success of China is due to the like the the like Taufei has just mentioned the the reform and opening policy, uh, the free market, the globalization, and the the national capitalism, uh, etc. But in Nova, I think Taufei tried to tell the story in a very different different way, even in a reverse way. Uh, she uh, she wants to revalue the heritage of the socialist time in China. So for me, that's why Nova has a time travel narrative, since Cao Fei uh, wants to bring the past back in track. She wants us to understand how history uh, really develop a function. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, in the conversation with Hans and uh, Cao Fei in our like catalog, I have mentioned that Cao Fei works as a media archaeologist in the whole project. Uh, so in my text, I'll also like try to approach the film with the media archaeology method. Uh, I found a very interesting. Uh, I found a very interesting media ecology in in Nova. If you watch the film very carefully, you can find many like different media machines from different times. Uh, so similar to the the main character. The, they are the machines are also in you know, a process of time travel for me. So, so we can we we can maybe consider the film as a story told by the media machines with the the non-human narrative that we probably can't understand. Uh, uh, a narrative hidden at at the computer's noises, maybe the screen or data. So. Uh, so in my essay, I really try to uh, highlight the, the non-human media ecosystem and its complicated, uh, its complex relationship to the uh, humanist history. Yeah. It'd be great to hear a little bit more about how your research, how your deep research intersected with the making of this publication. And it would be great to hear more about the different filmic references that are contained within it, uh, in your role as a writer and in your role as a as an editor. Well, I, I would like to share uh, the information on sorry about your like question. Uh, actually, when I was uh, invited uh, to join the HX project and uh, uh, to be uh, an editor of the HX book, so w one of the the reasons. Um, that makes me very like uh, uh, passionate and uh, exciting. It, the base, it's the base of the project. It's very cinematic for me. It's very cinematic. So as a scholar of film and uh, uh, moving images studies, uh, of course, so, uh, you will feel immediately the strong uh, att attractions released by the HX project since the, the whole project connects with or connects to cinema in a very deep way, uh, not in a like, super, super superficial way. So for me, the whole project basis on a cinematic imagination. Uh, I don't know if Cao Fei uh, would agree with me or not, but Nova uh, and the book and the installations, uh, even the exhibitions uh, for me are all part of this uh, imagination. The so imagination are all, about, are all about how to feel the history of China in a, a naturalistic way, in a very uh, alternative way. Cao Fei is a person who has a very, who has a real like cinematic thinking. Very few people has this mode of thinking, actually. When I talk about the project with her, I always feel like he wanted something uh, fluid, uh, moving, something montage-like. So, uh, of course, uh, another very cinematic element is the Hongxia Theater itself. I mentioned in my essay, the, the movie theater in Nova uh, stands at the core of a socialist uh, universe. It's a foundation of time and emotion in that world. 
So mm. the key to achieving uh, uh, the key to uh, rebooting everything in the universe. So and uh, and for lighting the universe moving around the uh, uh, the movie theater, Cao Fei actually become a collector. Uh, she collected many things like like uh, old stuff, like full footages, uh, projectors, uh, movie tickets, uh, movie posters. Uh, they are all from the uh, socialist time the, to create uh, a very special sense of texture uh, related to the film history in socialist China. Yeah. Thank you. And now uh, I think Joseph has another question. It's interesting. Joseph, because um, also quite at the beginning, when we started to work on this project, you, you made that link to Gilles Deleuze. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, um, the kind of returning to your text right at the beginning of, of the text, you quote, uh, give a quote by Gilles Deleuze, where um, he writes, uh, and I'm quoting, the important thing is to understand life, each living individually, not as a form or a development of a form, but as a complex relation between different velocities, between deceleration and acceleration of particles. And I was really thinking about these words um, of how much they speak to, I guess, the considerations of this book and your text, but also South Fay's wider research and thinking about this idea of the digital ghost, entities that are moving between the past, the present, the future, uh, different dimensions, different space times, which of course is very much tied up within the narrative of Nova, but um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more, extrapolate kind of that quote by Deleuze and how you talk about it in the text and in relationship to the narrative of Nova. Yeah, uh, I really like the quotation of Deleuze too, but you know, I can only give you a very brief like explanation because it's always very hard to explain Deleuze, you know. So uh, I think in, in Nova, uh, Cao Fei built a very lively ecosystem, as I mentioned, which includes not only people, but also all kinds of uh, uh, digital objects, uh, media machines and the platforms and the electronical uh, equipments and etc. They all seem to have their own lives for me. Uh, mm -hmm. They all seem to have their own lives. So uh, they're all like ghosts, as you mentioned, who haunted between the past, the present, and the future, between different forms, material or immaterial. Actually, th this is very fascinating for me. Uh, uh, also, it reminds me uh, the theory of uh, Gilbert Simonton. Uh, so who he regards, regards the object of technology or techno technological objects as a living orgasm, organism, sorry. So, um, and uh, I have, I, I remember that you also like a quote you quote in your introduction of the catalog, mm -hmm. the uh, 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 a par paragraph from the digital uh, existence. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we have the same reason to, to uh, uh, when we watch the, 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 the Noah and uh, when we think about the film, we have the same reason to think to to uh, consider uh, the elements, the electronic elements in the film are something alive, something human-like. Yeah, that's yeah. why I quote from Deleuze. Yeah, the quote, the Nukui one you mentioned. Yeah, talking about the sun yeah. becoming a digital object yeah. between colorful and visible beings, text files, binary codes, or signals generated by values of voltage and the operation of logic gates. So yeah, this kind of data having its own yeah. life. I mean, uh, we also wanted to move on actually uh, um, to uh, Zunjo G, right? And talk a little bit about the, the graphic design also of the book. I think, Joseph, you have a first question for Zunjo G. Yeah, I, um, I wanted to, I guess, ask you about kind of the, the whole design of the book and thinking about this kind of layered, multi-layered um, structure that it is, the way it sort of interweaves the visual materials very much connected with the text. Um, this kind of montage like rhythm that you have and um, the different inserts that are in the book, uh, the different paper types, textures and layouts. So I guess um, I'd be interested just as a starting question, how did you gradually sort of find the inspiration for designing this book? Uh, 
、呃，所以我们其实，在真正设计之前做了很大的工作，是如何划分这个书的内容，如何安排，嗯、呃，从曹飞收集的档案的物料到他的。作品，再到他的展览，这几个很重要的部分。Um, I'll be the helper for him to for this talk.、Um, so first of all, I think、uh, at the beginning we received a huge amount of、uh, materials from the artist,、um, and the content is very complex. So、um, at the beginning we start to work with how to、um, to 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 To, to do、uh, with these chapters, how to plan our content, and how to divide our content into different chapters from the archival materials and、uh, the, all the materials we received. So this book starts from the beginning, from the opening to the ending. Then, at the end of the book, from the opening to the ending, this space as a ending. So the whole thing is connected. 吻合了曹飞对于这个剧场的空间，包括他做这个整个红霞项目和 Nova 这部片子的这样一个概念。Um, the book starts with the full bleed, uh, images of the interiors of the theater, and、uh, this corresponds with the with the Nova, this film Nova. Yes. 然后在庞大的这个档案部分，我们穿插了很多这种小的这种这种插件就是希望用不同的材料，然后让它形成一个在视觉上和阅读上的一个层次。And we also did many、um, freely movable inserts like the photographs,、uh, leaflets,、um, postcards, and stickers throughout the book. So、um, it Expands the visual narrative through the overlaying with the archival images in the archive chapter. 比如说，在这块出现了这样计算机的说明书，那么这个就是计算机的这个节奏图。Uh, for example, this is a, a menu of the computer, and you can find in this page there is a how to say that? It's a model. One zero three. Yeah, what model one zero three explanation?、Computer. You can find the description here.、Mm -hmm. Yeah.、Um, And when it comes to the this dog, what's the name? Is Laika. Laika dog.、Um, And you will find a poster of the same content here. Then, in the Cao Fei's work, we also performed a very important design, which is to bring the Nova series back to the main stage of the Hongxia Theater Hall. And then it goes to the Nova part, which is the most important part.、Um, for this part, we、um, plan to project the film stills in the, in the ceilings and also in the walls of the theater. Um, I think also this is a dream of artist Hao Fei that she wants to、um, make a film in the future. 包括了像这样，呃，到他的 VR 的作品的部分，然后所有的图像发生了这种扭曲，空间的这种扭曲。And in the VR section, we also did、uh, the image distortion you can find in this chapter, and it's just like how. 包括页码。Virtual reality works, and also you can find the details here. The page is also page number is also distorted. 还有这样小的，小的这种，应该这个，在 Nova 剧照的部分有，你会看到这样小的这种黑白的图片。那么它就是，呃，在曹飞收集的物料的这个图像和他电影的这个图像之间的一种联系。就是过去和未来的之间的一种联系。And also through the film stills, you can find the small black and white、um, images, and it's smaller size images、um, alternate with the film stills.、Um, so this is resonance with the archival images in the archive chapter.、Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. And that's yes. It. I mean, do you 
I guess you sort of explained quite a few things within the book, the structure of making that you haven't tried before, but I was interested kind of what was, I guess, the biggest challenge in kind of dealing with all of these different contents and bringing it all together? Um, I think the most challenging part is uh, I have to deal with the big volume of the content and also um, how to distinguish these um, different kinds of materials and to, to, to match the relationship between all these materials and to plan the content of the book and to plan the sequence of the book and also to to, to deal with the storytelling flaw and the logic of each section. Now also, uh, and thank you so much for, for your work on the book. And uh, it's really wonderful that we can launch the book today uh, at the very moment when the exhibition closes, because I feel this is not the documentation of the exhibition. This is really, uh, it's a space like the exhibition. It's another experience space. And I think for many people, it will be the possibility to, 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 to experience the many dimensions of the archive uh, of Sao Fei, the, the, this whole Hongzha project, the many layers, no? And, and, and of course, you've, you've dealt so brilliantly with the complexity uh, by finding, you know, graphic solutions to, to render this complexity. So we are very grateful to you for working on this book in such an amazing way, because of course, this book is not a mere documentation of the exhibition. As we often spoke with Joseph and Sao Fei, uh, uh, actually it is very much the idea of a parallel reality. And as Bacon ex explained, it's also got a lot to do with knowledge production. And you found ways to actually render the complexity of all these materials graphically in, in many, many layers. Now I'm fascinated by the typography also you have created for the book. Can you tell us a little bit what were your reference points for this new fund? And also, if other people can use this fund, is it open source? Can we now all download the Sao Fei fund? Uh, 或者说俄语的这个字形但它呢又不是一个真正的俄语 I think the typeface I chose um, uncovers the communist uh, aesthetic character. Um, this is the first thing. And also, I'm very fascinated by the look and feel of this Soviet style typeface. Um, I, I think this typeface creates um, a mixture of a Soviet style typeface with Helvetica. Um, it looks like a kind of mix. Um, which ma uh, matches the character of the computer. It's very... <laughs> it's a kind of... Yeah, it's a, like a mistake, or it's not a very correct thing. So when they mix together, and I like that like feel. It cannot be downloaded, so it's not open source type <laughs> typeface. Okay, and uh, also uh, I was yeah. curious because, of course, we spoke a lot with Sao Fei about memory, about archive. You know, Eric Hobsbawm, the historian with whom we worked on a memory marathon at the same time, talked about dynamic memory, of course, not static memory, not nostalgia, but dynamic memory as a kind of a protest against forgetting. And I mean, this entire project, which is why I compared it initially also to the endeavor of the Bechos, um, basically has to do with really saving the memory of a whole history uh, which otherwise would be at risk of disappearing. Now, South Face work in that sense does what Panofsky said, you know, in terms of using the past, and this is not the direct thought of Panofsky, but 
it's actually an indirect road, you know, using the past to, to somehow invent the future or the future being invented with fragments from, from the past. I'm interested in terms of your graphic design and your typography, what are influences? What, who are the graphic designers from the past who inspired you for this book? Or who are the typographers from previous generations who, who inspired you? So that's a, it's another question for Soon Joji. Uh,包括我在这个书里边用的这款Havitica这个字体。那么这个字体在在五十年代的时候诞生的，然后呢，它曾经有一段时间，呃，好像被大家已经遗忘了，然后最近几年又重新活跃起来了。嗯，就是这种国际主义的风格对我影响比较大。Um, I think I I'm much inspired by the the internationalism internationalism from Switzerland, the graphic design style, yeah, and uh, Helvetica. Uh, was born in the 1950s, and I think it's a very popular typeface. And in in the in the time in the past, maybe in in a time it was forgotten by most of the people, but now it it reappears. And uh, yeah, yeah. So that's why I would like to use this. Uh, uh, that's why I think that the Helvetica gives me much inspiration. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Please, you wanted to say something else. Maybe some examples of graphic designers or some, you know, some names who inspire you uh, or typographers. Okay. Um, I think I got much inspiration from the book designers. Yeah, like Irma Boom. OKRM. OKRM. Zach. <laughs> um, Zach group, um, experimental Jessup. Mm, experimental yes. Jessup. Experimental Jessup. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I was actually thinking, you know, uh, very much about Irma Boom also because when Rem Rem Collins and I did the metabolism book, in a similar way to South Fay, you know, we had all this material, and then Irma finds these incredible, you know, typologies and systems that really, you know, made this material a space of experience, which is, I think, what you did so brilliantly with, uh, with this book. So, so thank you so much. So in French, one says, jamais, jamais deux sans trois, you know, never two without three. In the conversation this morning, we uh, would say, jamais trois sans quatre, never three without four, because this morning it is a conversation about the HX book in four parts. We had the conversation with the three protagonists and uh, now in part four, Joseph and I will have some general questions. Uh, Joseph, I hand over to you. Um, yeah, I think this is, as, as Hans already said, this is a question for all of you, but we're interested to know, I guess, about the process of you working together as an you know, artist, an editor and a designer. And I think one of my favorite parts of the book is this kind of uh, the archive section where all of the different materials, the photographs, the objects, um, all the different paraphernalia are kind of categorized and, and documented and, and archived in this chapter. So could you speak about how you all, I guess, A, work together in general, but then also your process of um, going through all of this material, and making decisions about how to, um, to sequence it in a certain way? I think, uh, Fei Chen, we have a discussion uh, about the editing, right? Because uh, yeah. Bei Chen uh, look at my archive and also we have discussion uh, about different layer of this project. So, and then we are fixing on different category of this project. Maybe Bei Chen can talk about this. Yeah. So uh, I, I must admit that uh, the, it's not very easy to uh, work for HX book as an editor. Uh, actually, I joined the, the project earlier than Xiaoxi. Uh, uh, when I first talked to Cao Fei uh, for the book, uh, we have like uh, so many like materials and archives, but the, 
without any clues to how to uh, arrange them. So we have we had many many like meetings to try to find the logic of the book and um, how to like uh, uh, make the the text and the images work together. So, but luckily we have Xiaoxi. Yeah, the when the designer joined the, our like the 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 the, the, the group. Uh, uh, he can, uh, he actually brought like the visual thinking other than my like the literal thinking, you know. So uh, uh, when, uh, after uh, Xiaoxi joined the, the group, he started to like uh, uh, carefully read the archives to find a visual logic uh, besides uh, the, the, the logic of the text. And uh, on the other side, I start to work with the writers. Uh, you know, the, uh, the articles in our uh, catalogs, uh, some of them are invited before the, uh, just at the beginning of the launching of the project. So, uh, uh, and we think the, the book should not be uh, only focused on the, the HX project, it should be a. Uh, it should can like. It should can. Inc uh, it should includes many like uh, relevant contents. Uh, so uh, after. <clears throat> so when the uh, uh, when we uh, invite the writers to join the the project, we find uh, we try to approach uh, the uh, the theor theorists, the architecture, architects and uh, uh, media scholars all from all the fields. So um, when we have the, finally have the text, we start to think how to arrange the text uh, with the, the, the uh, graphic, uh, uh, graphical uh, contents. So um, uh, it takes lots of time to find the conclusion. Uh, uh, so, uh, it's really hard to uh, to work in the like the in a very long uh, process and with so many like uh, uh, materials archives from different uh, periods. Uh, for me, it's a very big challenge. So uh, I think uh, from now on, I will not uh, be afraid of like a being any like publications uh, editors after the after hx so yes uh, uh i i think uh i think i give a, a big space to to shen xiaoxi the designer if he agree um right shen xiaoxi you think i give a very free space for you 100 percent uh, maybe the big problem is I uh, 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 we have too much material, uh, too uh, complex, and, and I'm the one keep uh, uh, growing more and more material until the last second, right? Uh, uh, so she and Bei Chen, and they are follow the <coughs> process of this project. Like uh, Xiaoxi uh, uh, visit uh, uh, when I filming the Nova two years ago, and and they, um, I mean, it's important they uh, deeply involve the project. It's not we see this material, and I uh, like Xiaoxi is almost like editor doing the image editor and the con contents of the project. So this is a uh, is a uh, a uh, a. Uh, uh, is is a long it's kind of a torture i mean the process is torture it's, uh, it's really hard for everyone here but we are so delighted to have the book today and um to celebrate it with all of you and uh hope to see you soon i have two last questions one is it's a very long-term project as we said it involves a lot of research it's of course an artist book but it's also um, 
a scientific publication. It has something of an academic journal. It's a very hybrid publication. It's a history book connected to Chinese history. And um, I wanted to ask you all about the afterlife of this project, the afterlife of the Hongja Theater also. Because when I visited you uh, together with Joseph in 2019, Southway, in the lead up to the show, we discussed the idea of preservation, the fact that the theater will eventually be demolished. And um, uh, of course, that again made me think of the Bechos, because the Bechos documenting, photographing all this industrial architecture, basically in the 60s, 70s, that has now all disappeared. The only way to see it today is actually through their photographs. Otherwise, a whole world either would have would have disappeared. So in a way, the use of VR, of AR, with acute, of film and photography, together, of course, with this printed compendium, is, is an archive of, 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 of history. It's, a, it's an act of preservation. Can you maybe talk a little bit about that, Saofé, and also about how you, you see the future of it? Will it really disappear? Uh, for this project, I think the most important things what I did and what we did for the book and the project is not only just the archive. I think the uh, the archive is just a part is the uh, is part of this volume, and I think the most important thing is we build up an alternative archive to describe this history. Uh, this archive is not officially archive. And we through this book have a, a, a new way to discover this history. And also, not uh, I think it's uh, beyond the uh, uh, the uh, uh, 那个贝谢尔夫妇英雄。嗯，就他提到那个贝谢尔。Mr. and Mrs. Beecher，你说。I think the difference of the uh, Mrs. Abisha uh, uh, couple, right? Uh, the difference is not only just document as a uh, uh, photo, but of, of course the time is changing, the media is uh, improved. Uh, but the important thing is not just protest against the forgotten. It's for sure we protest against is forgotten is our mission. But also important thing is how we develop the forgotten, how to developing and create base the history shadow. And then we still, as artists can still, not just simple to mirror the reality, but we, we, we are developing a new page based the forgotten. I mean, there could not be a better conclusion to this, uh, to this discussion. Uh, thank you all so, so much. I do have a very last question, and as Sao Fei knows, it's the only recurrent question in all, all my conversations, and it's about um, the unrealized project. So, so Joseph and I wanted to ask the three of you, Sao Fei, Yang Weichen, and also Sun Zhou Ji, about your unrealized project in 2020, because we know a lot about architects' unrealized projects because they publish them and very often they actually do produce reality through publishing unrealized projects. But we know very little about artists, editors, academics, graphic designers, unrealized projects. So I wanted to ask the three of you uh, to tell us about a dream, a project which was too big to be realized. Now that both the exhibition blueprint has been realized, has come to an end, in two chapters. Now that the book has been published as of today, we launch this publication. I wanted to sort of ask you about what has not happened yet to tell us about one unrealized project, which is particularly dear to you. I want to, uh, my dream is to build a small independent publishing house and it's not realized yet. Hmm. Uh, okay, uh, uh, for me, uh, I haven't like published my uh, PhD thesis. <laughs> 
so it's a it has been like a three years so i i i hope i can have it like next year then uh actually i have a um the second stage of a collaboration with the artist liu chuang who uh, has also uh, <clears throat> known for very many years and uh, now uh, he is in a very remote place for the uh, for the the new films shooting i i actually i i really want to join him but i i have i have no time i have to stay in beijing and uh, give give lessons to my like students so i have no time to join him it's very like pity and the, the third pity it's a um, it's really pity that i couldn't make myself uh, uh like a uh, travel to London to see the blueprints. I even got a visa for the trip, for the trip. But you know, it's, it's really it's really a shame. But hopefully, thank you so much. Hopefully, you can see the exhibition when it goes on tour because it's going to travel. Yeah. Uh, next station is is Denmark. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's also very like far away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hope. <laughs> okay. And Salve. So I think the Freeze magazine asked me uh, about the future question, right? Remember Joseph Hans? Uh, yeah, I think for the far future, uh, uh, be I work with you for some project in the mass. Remember, I say I can. Uh, you you create the the last project um, in your life or. And send the artists uh, remain to the mass, right? You can build up uh, artists rem uh, 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 remains in the mass. So I think it's a beautiful project to develop our um, imagination out out of the earth. Wonderful! Thank you so much. And we wanted to open it up for one question. And we received just now a question from the artist Nicolas Grafia, who is. Uh, doing a project at the Museum of uh, Contemporary Art in Warsaw. And uh, he wanted to ask Sao Fei a question. Um, he said that you've not been able to travel really after the Serpentine exhibition. You were in Singapore for many months and you've just returned, of course, now uh, to Guangzhou. And, and not, uh, basically you're not in Beijing yet, but you're now in Guangzhou. Um, so Nicolas wanted to know if you can tell us a little bit about this experience of, of, of the lockdown and uh, how it has influenced your work. Have you been uh, working on new projects since the opening in London? So that's a question from Nicolas Grafia from Warsaw. Uh, so, so I'm very lucky to uh, take part in the opening of Serpentine. But unfortunately, we only have two weeks open in uh, in March. Uh, after that, uh, after the opening, I'm spent like almost uh, totally nine months in Singapore. Um, even I'm quite familiar with Singapore. Every year, I visit there for a month or two months, but I never have a chance to spend like a, a, a more than half year there. To uh, to have a, a more chance to understand the artificial city, but with nobody, with no tourism, so uh, I think it's a very good chance to observe the city after the virus. Um, so I spent some time to do some uh, like a, a exercise i mean like uh, art exercise with my daughter with my family member at the apartment during the lockdown period so um i i, I still believe it's like a use media and use art as a as a tool to uh to uh to deal with daily life as a as a tool and also give like uh, my kid introduce to my kids uh creation maybe is a tool of a survival uh, in this emergent period 
Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Beijing. Thank you, Xiaoxi.